Okay, it looks like we're arriving at the job site. I see a truck is already pouring. So we will get our chutes on and get our slump down to what it says on the ticket. So now we will find out what our slump is and put our chutes on. I'm going to call ahead to the driver in front of me. 182, Gary. It says a six slump on the ticket. Is that what they want? Yeah. Okay, we know that they do want the slump that it says on the ticket. So while I'm putting on my chutes, we're going to add water to get it up to slump. So I'll use my cruise. Have my truck grab. It saves time to do this all at once. Once I add water, I should be just below a thousand on my meter on my slump gauge. So I'm going to hop out and put my chutes on while mixing. I sprayed my chutes with water. That's a little trick. If you spray them down with water, the first concrete wet or dry will flow much easier. Now we will check our slump. So the truck ahead of me is still pouring. I have put on my chutes and I have my concrete down to slump. So I am ready to pour as soon as he is empty and out of the way. You'll take note that my truck put me on the job. If it does not do that, you need to put yourself on the job on your GPS. And we'll go over that a little bit later on how to use your GPS. But I am setting ready to pull up and discharge my concrete when the truck ahead of me is done. So it's my turn on the job. First thing I'm gonna do is lock my truck in low and raise my hopper because it's safe to do so on this job. Start discharging a little bit and let the contractor see the slump I have and see if he wants to add water or if he wants to leave it how it is. The contractor likes my slump, so we're going to go with what I have. He has told me to just leave my chute in the middle, and he'll go back and forth. Now, when you're pouring, you get a feel for how your truck will pour out the concrete. I have a paving drum on mine. Not all trucks have that. So I know to listen because it's a two drop instead of a steady drop into my chute. 
I pour along with him, I watch his body movements. If he pulls back towards his rod, I know, like he did just there, I know that he's a little low up there, so I'll kind of stay where I am. If he's pushing back towards my chute, I know that I'm a little high and I need to back up and give him room. Now I'm probably 20, 20 maybe feet from the rod, so I'm going to stop and let them catch up just in case they are a little high or low wherever we happen to be. So now they've gone to rotting and we'll do a little bit more in just a second. They're ready for me to start again. So I do have to go around a curve. What I'll do is I'll get a little bit ahead of them to where I can reach from the other side of the curve, give them a second to catch up to me and be ready on the other side when it's time. You see, take note of how high my chute is off the ground. If you pour it a little wet, which is a six slump, if you leave it up just a little bit, it'll spread out easier for them and make it easier on you as you're watching it. So I'm going to stop here, let them catch up and move around the curve. So you'll notice I poured the radius i reposition myself for when they're ready to start pouring again. Always make sure that they scrape your chute whenever you have to reposition on a job so you don't get splatter everywhere. When you're repositioning on a job, always pay attention to your surroundings. Obstacles laying on the ground, other vehicles, things of that nature. Next, we'll wash out after we're done pouring. Whenever you're done pouring and completely empty, always make sure they scrape and clean your chute so you do not get concrete on the roadway going to the designated washout pit. Most of the time you're washing out on the job unless there is a designated pit somewhere in the subdivision. So you need to check with the contractor and find out what it is you need to do. Now let's go wash out. Always make sure after pouring, you write down the water they added above the slump that states on the ticket and put down the contractor's name and give them a copy of your ticket. Whenever we get set and get ready to get out and wash, we always change. So dispatch knows we have stopped pouring which also tells them, if we have not contacted them on the radio, that they've had enough. All right, now let's wash down. There's certain ways you can do it to where you're very efficient washing down. I do it the same way every time. Always make sure your hopper's clean. There's quite a bit of buildup in the top of my chute. You can see where they have me washing out at. Now, here's the way I always wash. It keeps your drum clean. Keep your fins clean. You always hit the back of your fin. Now the whole front is clean. So we'll take a second, get all of this out of the top. No. 
normally there's not this much built up. Make sure you get in behind your boot. You do not want leftover rock and concrete falling out. Now we're going to go back and finish here. Get my fins further back. I know it's hard to see because it is winter time and we're running hot water. Make sure your leaf holes are clean. One more shot up through here. And my drum is clean. Now let's do the shoots. Okay, so now it's time to do the shoots. I always hit my windshield real quick, just in case anything comes back out of the shoots up here onto the window, it won't stick. Now, doing the shoots, I also have a system for this. Go all the way up, as far as you can see, and then come all the way back down. Now, the majority is gone. So I go up again, get in between my shoots where they come together, put it again back down, shoots are done that quickly now if you want after you've done that hit your window again you can see a little bit had got on there now they're clean one last inspection of the shoots are clean and we're ready to hang our shoots and get back on the road I have completed washing down my hoses are on and secure my chutes are on and secure. Always make sure so nothing falls off or falls down while going down the road. Now inside the truck, we need to make sure we turn off our low, which also will kick our hopper down. It sometimes takes a minute they give me 20. And there it is. Always pull to make sure. We are now ready to get on the road. So what we do next, push in our brake, put it in neutral, put it in reverse, make sure we are out of gear, out of low. I always do it twice to make sure your navigation, once you start down the road, will show dispatch that you are returning. And we'll pick this back up at the plant. 